This is Cinematic Suffering, where we watch every horror movie streaming on Netflix, from A to Z, for better or worse. Life is pain, and so are bad horror movies. Uh, not only was your southern accent on point, but your female uh, imitation. <laughs> Amazing. Clay is a man of many talents. I know. It's, I, I just manifest my feminine energy, and I've uh, lived here too long. So. I felt the Susan B. Anthony coming out of you right now. Uh, Carrie's Carrie's mother is that character, but but nice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, get on started here. It looks let's like do we, this. we do have a, a show called uh, Cinematic Suffering. That's right. And we do Cinematic Suffering. Yeah, we do different stuff. I'm sorry, I slipped into some weird. <laughs> that southern accent just grew on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah Miss Pendergrass uh, got her, her claws in tight. So yeah. what we do here on Cinematic Suffering is there's three of us. I'm Clay. I'm Morgan. Uh, and I'm Jason. And the three of us are Cinematic Suffering, where we go down the Netflix catalog in alphabetical order in the horror genre, and we review all of those movies. And we have been truly horrified with this current episode. Yes, that's right. We have the sequel to the inexplicable American Poltergeist, and this is American Poltergeist 2, the something of something something. What was the tagline again? Yeah, it's the Poltergeist of Borley Forest, and there's a little bit of backstory to this. Uh, there's American Poltergeist, which came out in 2015. A horrible film, didn't need a sequel at all, and there really wasn't a sequel made. There was a film called The Poltergeist of Borley Forest, though, that was made in 2013, <laughs> and I guess they all looked at it and said, hey, this is just as horrible as our original film. Let's see if we can buy the rights, change the name into American Poltergeist 2, and just call it a sequel. And that's that's where we are at today. Yeah, and it, it definitely it, it plays off the popularity of the horror classic just simply called Poltergeist. I wanted to ask you guys real quick, just what made the original Poltergeist a successful movie in your estimation? Oh, Morgan? Oh, man. Uh, you know, for me, well, obviously, you know, there's several jump scares in the original Poltergeist. Um, you've got suspense, you've got some chills and whatnot. Um, right. And, you know, there was just some, you know, some mind boggling stuff happening in the original Poltergeist. Like when the guy had like the slab of meat up on the counter and it like started moving and then had maggots in it and stuff. And then you had like the kids staring at the TV and but what really freaked me out and, and the original Poltergeist was that damn clown that was in that kid's bedroom, man. Oh, Yo, God, you remember the clown? Yeah. yeah. I, do I was little. That thing freaked me out, dude. I was like, okay, no bueno here. I am not messing with clowns, <laughs> yeah. dude. These things got to go. <laughs> so the thing is, uh, the original Poltergeist had jumps. It had scares. There are legitimate scares. There are some uh, moments of levity and uh, some you know, humorous parts as well. And... Uh, are you trying to say American Poltergeist 2 and the other one doesn't have these things? <laughs> I would never lead you guys down an obvious path, okay. but yeah, like, uh, you know, it's a, it had uh, compelling characters, a good story, and we're going to find none of that here. But um, let's jump right in. So American Poltergeist 2, the sequel that need not be, was directed by the visionary mastermind known as Stephen McKendry and boasts the scribing brilliance of R. Presley Stevens. It stars Marina Petrano, uh, Christopher Engel, Rhea, R no one cares. Why, why am I telling you this? No one gives a shit. It's got a bunch of people in it. So let's. Yes. And this movie definitely has people in it. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> I just choked up there. I apologize. I couldn't even believe this movie had people in it. <laughs> so oh. I, I, you guys had already seen this, I think probably even before the Christmas break. Yes. Uh, I think, I think the week of, or something like that, I was watching it. Yeah. Yeah, so this is one that I I had put off for a while because I had already seen American Poltergeist. So we had already kind of been gearing up for that one. And I think you guys had already seen it, and I was not looking forward to this. Um, but I, I think the only thing about American Poltergeist, the first, was that it was an hour and 18 minutes. And <laughs> when I saw this was an hour and 43 minutes, um, I immediately started – I immediately hated it because I didn't even watch the first scene, and I just saw how long it was. and. It was like a record scratching. Yeah, it's like a it, it's like you're getting ready to go on a blind date with somebody that you know you won't like, won't be attracted to, and be annoyed by. So yeah, it, it had three strikes against it before the first opening credits roll. Oh, yeah, yeah, the the opening credits with the aerial aerial font logos. 
So. A, uh, and, and, a, and, a, and a spooky logo uh, that, that, you know, was probably creepier than anything we're going to see in the movie. But, uh, <laughs> well, let's kick it off. Uh, Morgan, why don't you start? Like, tell us what, uh, ha- how this thing opened. Uh, let me, <laughs> man. Um, yeah, very slowly. Um, so uh, help me out here. I'm trying to remember because it's been a little while since I watched. I didn't I didn't write a whole lot down. So as far as the opening and whatnot, so girl, girl on a swing gets killed by. That's a dude right. On that's a, right. That's a right. Yeah. So you get this anonymous girl sitting on a swing and she gets killed. Well, she gets she gets uh, the guy like comes up and drags her in the woods or something like that. Was it? Yeah. 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 So it was like some like. And, and so that's where that's what kicks it off. And so it's like. I guess it's trying to set the tone of like, okay, here's what, here's what bad thing happened that leads to all the other things that are going to happen that never really happened. Yeah. You know what? These things are, uh, this is a, yeah, it's a little girl or uh, not a little girl, but it's a, it's a girl just running through the forest or the woods at first. And there's someone with a sickle after her, but the, the, you, you see like the scenery around her and it's a lot of palmetto bushes and leaves and it just reeks of Florida to me. Oh yeah. Oh, as, does, soon, yeah. as soon as I saw it, I knew it was living in Florida. I knew it was Florida. I was like yeah. looking at the vegetation and all the plants and everything. I was like, okay, this was filmed somewhere in Florida, which later on, uh, kind of just a real quick jump here. It's like when the girls are leaving the high school in the parking lot, you can actually see the location of where it's at. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Where was it? So it was in Florida? Yeah, it was just outside of Tampa and, uh, and Seminole Heights is where it was Ooh. filmed at, just outside of Tampa, oh. okay. just north ah. of Tampa. Well, I'm glad I I'm glad I nailed it because I know the little girl gets dragged by her hair by the stranger and then she's stabbed with a sickle. But still, even that scene reeked of Florida. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because that happens every afternoon yeah, that happens. in Florida. That's, yeah, that's a, well, I mean, you read about it in the news all the damn time. It's you know, Florida man this and Florida man that. If some girl, little girl gonna get taken off of a damn swing and stabbed with a sickle, it's gonna happen in Florida. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 you know that's where the sun likes to bake all of the psychopaths. <laughs> they bake the psychopaths in Florida and then release them to the wild of the states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, yes. <laughs> We tag them on the ear so we can chart their progress. <laughs> um, all right, we uh, God, we're, it's it, it, it's never going to end. But it, we smash cut to Paige, our heroine, at a uh, drunken, uh, uh, horny uh, high school party in the woods. She's in Borley Forest, and she's going off to cock block and search for her friends who actually know how to have fun at a party. It was a classic trope again, where you had like the young adults, the you know college slash high school kids at a party, just like we saw in American Poltergeist 1, um, happening all over again. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, these these teens are doing the devil's work, and uh, like American Poltergeist <laughs> one, I still got that got the feeling that this was another kind of religious uh, themed, not a religious theme, but maybe made by religious people. Um, there's some stuff that happens later on uh, that that kind of bespoke to me about that, if that's even a phrase. That sounds right to me. I mean, well, it, you know, and if it if it is a religious film, I was bored to tears from beginning to end, and that's kind of how typical, I remember church. Yeah, yeah. typical religious yeah. film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and now that now that you've kind of, and that, I guess that did kind of stick in my brain too that it was in Florida. It seemed very Florida like when they're hanging around in the woods. You know, it's like okay, ghosts aren't going to get you, but a big gator might. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so Paige Paige goes wandering off in the woods and. She does. She's looking for her two friends, I guess, and she sees a big tree. And then it's typical things of you find in a, a forest, obviously. And then she finds the remains of a noose, which is also kind of something typical you find in a forest in Florida. And uh, this, this is, you know, it's like just a tree. It's not a spooky tree. It's just a big tree. <laughs> There, yeah, there's no, there's no trunk uh, of a person. There's no uh, a torso hanging from it. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's just an empty noose, and she just, you know, piques her interest, and she walks up to it and. Yeah, and then her then her friends come out of the woods, and the girl it's a girl and a guy, uh, a multiracial cast. So <laughs> kudos for that. And uh, the girl is mopping her chin like she just got done blowing the guy. And it it I don't know why it struck me, but it was like that's grosser than if you actually showed the DJ. <laughs> <laughs> I picked up on that too, Clay. I saw that. I was like, oh, okay. And it's like all right, you know. <laughs> I'm surprised that you know if it, if it really was a religious feature, she would have had like boils erupting on her lips within minutes. <laughs> <laughs> there's a so i don't but know if no, you guys caught it 
I don't know if you guys caught it or if it was just my sound system here, but did you was the <laughs> audio horrible for this entire thing? Oh yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh, it unspeakable. Was, yep. These kids it were was... in the car driving away and their conversation was so muffled that I couldn't even hear. I did I think I had to turn on um my closed, closed caption. caption for a while. It, yeah. There. I'm surprised that worked, you know. <laughs> <laughs> God forbid the deaf uh, among us can't enjoy American Poltergeist too. No, it was terrible. Like we keep our sound bar at around twenty is about where you can uh, the sound levels are normally okay. And I had to have this thing cranked yeah. to dangerous levels. It was yeah. Well, that's so, what happens uh, when you're you know you're relying on just the microphone on the handheld cam that you got from Best Buy you know <laughs> a couple of days before. And, and I'm sure the director was like, "We got to finish filming this, guys. I got I only have t- uh, twenty more days before." Or I can return this camera and get a refund. <laughs> so Paige uh, goes home. She, the, the the two kids, I guess one of them is her friend and Ava, I believe. And then the other is just this random kid, this other boy. But the audio, audio is horrible. Uh, but Paige goes home. We see a security camera shot of her entering the house, her house, which flickers kind of, I guess it's supposed to be a spooky flicker. And she, this is this is the funniest part. She enters her room and her creepy dad is sitting on her bed in the dark. And there's like yeah. this spooky evil music playing while this is happening. And I thought we were about to see something really bad. I mean, really bad. And then, no. and then I, I put a note. I said, oh, we are. It's this movie. But well, uh, that and the dad's acting. Yeah, he's dad's kind of, acting. He, he's kind of like the Donna Spangler of this one. He's just so robotic. I mean, it's just, yeah. I, yeah, every everybody in this thing from Paige uh, to uh, dad is great. Dad is like uh, Paul Blart mall cop without any of the charm. <laughs> um, Paige, our main character, her the the only way that she can deliver her lines is with a real big eye roll. Like she r- rotates her eyes in three hundred and sixty <laughs> degrees. Yep. Um, you know, top to bottom, not in the back of her head. That would be kind of cool. But uh, it, it, it's almost like she's got to access the information, and it's it's at the top of her brain so she's got to look there her parents are off or just delightfully awful her mom yeah. is i i don't even know how to to put words to her mom it's, it's... I, she her mom is like oh god it's it, what did she ask you weren't you were you out with guys were there guys yeah. there's yeah. strange men coming to our door i was like she's a teenage girl <laughs> well, you, know. It's like, you know jason kind of leading to what you were talking about again getting the vibes of this being a religious film it's almost like the mom was kind of like you know the church going mom and doesn't want her daughter seeing boys and you know all all that classic stuff about you know the protective mom and all that stuff and everything yeah. no premarital yeah. sex no drugs yeah, no alcohol. yeah yeah it's like was there penises and the marijuana there i bet the devil's thistle was all there oh we're forgetting tommy her brother oh, tommy plays a, a a great part in this movie just imagine a dude that's kind of like a hippie slash stone he you know what he look kind of looks like he looks like a skinny stoner rock guy and he's he was allegedly in the military i was like yeah yeah i know i did that too <laughs> I, I i said uh this uh Co- tommy and his friend cooper that are like <sighs> Both of these guys look like they're extras in a Stuart Gordon Lovecraft film. <laughs> <laughs> like they're the the shadow over Innsmouth, the the local residents there. They look like fish eyed, goofy people. But, yeah, they do look yeah. like that. They look like don't go near the river, governor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a really good accent. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and that was cinematic suffering. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Can't go wrong with those awkward pauses, man. You can't go wrong. It's a, you just got to fill them with whimsy. Uh, Morgan, why don't you do the honors of, of – uh, well, no, we already have described Tommy. He, well, the one thing that we've left out about Tommy is his speech impediment, which uh, he's got a lisp, but his real disability is his acting. He acts like he doesn't <laughs> want to be here. That's what I loved about Tommy. Yeah, Tommy is uh... – God, well, I just want to go back to the dad. Did anyone else get sure. that feeling when he was sitting in the room in dark? I know we're going back here, but I just <laughs> can't get over it. It's it's haunting me to this day. It's like he's sitting on the bed in the dark waiting for his daughter. And then, oh, man, I thought, like I said, I thought it was going to go to a really bad well, place. And then uh, he just says, oh, you're grounded. I, and, and I can tell you, uh, as a father of a daughter, I never once ever had the urge to sit in my daughter's bedroom on her bed in the dark like that. That's just not normal. It's, that's 
the app. <laughs> what do you want her to turn normal, Morgan? What's your problem? <laughs> Stop being a normal father. <laughs> <laughs> For now on, just uh, just just sit in random rooms with the yeah, lights exactly, off and have right? a little just... spooky sound check in the back. <laughs> <laughs> take, it, yeah. take it with me wherever I go. I've read your journal. It's like, Dad, I don't have a journal. I wrote one for you. <laughs> okay. well, they, yeah, so we learned that, that this brother is was in Iraq, and I, I just laughed. I was like, sure, buddy. Um, but they, the camera work around the dinner table is amazing. Shaky, unstable, totally out of place. It's it's very distracting. It, yeah, you know what the, the camera work remind me? The cinematographer had heard had read of Dutch angles in a in a book about filmmaking, and he was like, I'm gonna try that. And it never really works. But I'm gonna try that matter. multiple times while the camera is moving. I'm not even gonna set the camera down. Yeah, you can't do that with a handheld shot like that. That's just not gonna work. No, it it goes it goes from person to person at the table. They're both saying some dumb innocuous thing. Like we go to Paige, who's like eye roll, eye roll. You can almost hear the wet sound of her eyeballs twirling in their sockets as she's trying to deliver her lines and then they go to mom and she's like you should really not you should stay away from the penis and the marijuanas and then it goes to dad who's just like mm, he's, he's got sleep apnea while he's waking and then tommy who I, you know and i'm not going to insult the other abled by mocking the way he talks but he's bored and he's got a lisp <laughs> and each <laughs> each transition to each successive person is wobbly like the cinematographer's like i should not drink so much Jaeger before we shoot this. <laughs> I, you know, I kind of got the sense that they were almost like poking fun at ultra conservative parents. Like they were just kind of like yeah. over the top versions of conservative parents, you know? Well, maybe that's what, yeah. maybe that's what I missed uh, during this whole movie. Maybe I was just so focused on, oh, they're, they are conservative. Maybe they were just trying to, you know, poke fun at it or, you know, play against it or something. So maybe, maybe well, it just flew over my head and this is just a really I, high art film. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just don't get it, Jason. Right. You're not you're not high minded enough. Well, and uh, you know, like I was thinking, Paige is the perfect daughter in their estimation. She, she should have been like, guys, I didn't do any drugs, and I cock blocked my friend. So what more do you want from us doing God's work? <laughs> well, they realize that she looks somewhat like Lindsay Lohan, and they don't want her to go to that same path. Oh, but, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she Paige, our hero or heroine, however you want to say it, our hero. It looks like Lindsay Lohan with the, not even a drop of the acting bug. Oh no, <laughs> no. So, <there's, laughs> so I guess she works at a um, a little diner or whatever, and she runs into this cute guy. I, I guess it's Cooper, but I had you know, and his. So she asks what he wants, and he says, "How about a smile?" Did anyone cringe at that? I cringe. Oh, oh yeah, I did. yeah, it was just a real draw delivery. Ooh, and then she, yeah. she apologizes for not smiling, and I was like, "Why are you apologizing for not smiling?" She needs to read just. Uh, she needs to read up on modern uh, feminism, and she'll be up to speed. Yeah, that that whole "why don't you smile" thing should be the first. Uh, should be the first warning signs. And they played around with this uh, this stalking versus wooing aspect. Yeah. Throughout the movie, and it, it just kind of hovered on the edge because we see she goes home. She she's sitting on her bed again. Her small bed, by the way, it's not even the size of a twin bed. It's smaller than a twin bed, and. <laughs> She's drawing the cute guy or Cooper before <laughs> yeah. she's going to sleep. <laughs> well, it's because her it, it's because her stupid conservative parents won't let her in, in, within arm's reach of any pornography. Right, right. Girl. She's got to make her own. Well, and let's talk about the bedroom for a second. It's weird that these movies were only kind of linked accidentally and after the fact, because the same set designer didn't do their job in this one, too. It's like, why why is there yet another dwarf prison <laughs> that, that, that these people are sleeping in? Her, her cot does looks like not even a single. It looks like a .5 if they make yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, and that even comes into play later when her friend Ava, or no, not Ava, the other friend is sleeping over, and they're sleeping in the same bed, this time not heel to toe, luckily, but they're sleeping in this mini bed, and you can tell it's so uncomfortable for the actors. Oh, yeah, they're <laughs> yeah, you in there like sardines, man. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't help but spoon the person. Like, you should just be like, look, we're just going to have to get through this. We'll both get therapy afterwards, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, there's some uh, she goes to sleep and there's some ominous music as, as a shadow passes a uh, page opens her eyes she looks around and another shadow passes by but she's clueless uh in the morning time mom is kind of weirded out that P- page was in a room the other night uh, she's like oh did you get any sleep and page was like oh no something kept waking me up and then mom was like oh i'm surprised you were even in your room last night I know, and it, you know, like it's a good thing that they didn't have me working on the script because it would have been, it at least would have been entertaining. I would have said something to be like, "Mom, I can bang Paige's box just fine. I don't need to leave anywhere." <laughs> we may want to cut that out. We'll decide. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she goes back to it. She so she goes back to her room. And she finds the drawing of Cooper is all scribbled over. Um, yeah, jealous, yes. poltergeist. Oh yeah. Um, her her. Well, and before yeah. and before that, not to interrupt, but before that, there was this creeper kind of like the ghost is looking at her dressing from outside the, oh, the house yeah, yeah. kind of thing, which was off putting to me. Maybe it's because I'm getting older, so even pretend leering at young women as they undress seems just super duper. Well, crazy. and and I I want to add one more thing on this whole the scene of her going to bed. I didn't pick up on this, but I actually watched this one with my daughter, and my daughter picked up on it, and she's like. Oh, she's going to bed wearing makeup and her head hair in a pull back in a ponytail. Yeah, that's no good. Which kind of shows she just didn't even make any effort to like even sell the sleeping scene. It's like it probably, it's going to sleep. I mean, it's like she's wearing full makeup and her hair in a ponytail. So it's like she just literally laid down and they're filming it. And like five minutes later, then she's getting right out of bed. <laughs> it probably contributed to her bad acne too. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, she does. And, you know, uh, it, I, I was thinking the same thing. Like, oh, poor girl. Yeah, I, 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 I have been yeah. watching. Yeah. I don't want to judge her I, I, on, her stu- I, on her stupid acne. I was just, wow, they really hired teenagers for this, though. <laughs> yeah, they really did. And it, it made me realize why people hire, uh, you know, people in their mid-20s to play teenagers instead of teenagers. Right. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go, where are we? Oh, uh, so we, we kind of f- jump to where Tommy works at, which is some kind of server room. I couldn't tell if he was at home or if he's at work. And I guess his work is working at home, at home in a a computer aspect but it never kind of doesn't really delve yeah, into what he does do but and and not to to spoil any of the plot developments but he works at home and cooper no, shows up and kind of creeps page out you know like cooper happens to work with tommy uh the cooper's the guy that was uh, hitting on page and you know i i'm not into guys but i can tell that that coop that uh cooper is kind of out of page's league but anyway um they work together and it turns out that i guess they're the, the way that tommy makes his money is analyzing the videotape of their security camera right in front of the house <laughs> it's kind of the one job yeah. he's got one of the great uh, great things of the this analyzing business that he has of looking at his own home is that we don't we don't get to see <laughs> at all uh, every scene of them looking at the screen wondering what is going on and seeing ghosts and figures i think there's one scene where we see it and then the rest of the time the scooby gang is just kind of gathered up in front of the <laughs> computer monitor to go oh my god look at that and it's just facial expressions but nothing we don't see what they're seeing well and they're sitting in this random weird empty room like it's just like a room in the middle of a rental house or something i don't know it just there's nothing there it's just like a desk and all of them huddled around the computer Right. <laughs> there's not even a, a poster no, on the background. It's, it's, it's to like to... totally like they're just like, okay, we're going to rent this house. We're going to set up this room right here, and this is going to be our security room, quote unquote. Yeah, it's 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 like the um, it's like the apartment that you walk through when you're deciding if you want to rent from whatever shithole yeah. apartment you're going to rent <laughs> yeah. from. That's kind of what it reminded me of. You know, it's that no one cared, but um, uh. So what happens next? There's uh okay, Paige gets some flowers delivered. Okay, first of all, Ta- or Cooper shows up and she's like, "That's kind of creepy that you just that that you would stalk me like that." And he's like, "You know," and that's where Jason referenced the stalking versus wooing. And then Paige gets some flowers delivered, and her mom is uh, none too happy. Yeah. yeah. I didn't understand. I mean, I didn't understand any of this movie pretty much. But yeah, how when this guy wrote this script. What's his name? <laughs> I mean, oh, I'm not. I'm not going to scroll back I, that far. I mean, that would be more effort than he put into the script. I mean, <laughs> does uh, does he interact with people? I'm just wondering if he's maybe um, a cl- a shut in, an agoraphobic, and he just doesn't interact with people in a normal way. And this is what he how he thinks. <laughs> 
people talk to each other and how his mom and dad probably talk to each other while he was up <laughs> while he's down in the basement. They're talking to each other about him down in the basement going, God, you fucking talks like this. This is weird. I know it's, 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 it's weird that his only friends are, are dirty stuff toys that he found. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, the, the mom is freaking out over the teenage daughter getting visits from boys, getting flowers. Um, she receives the flowers. That she, I, I was just, I was like, who wrote this? Because she reads the the flowers are ugly as fuck, and everyone is freaking out. Yeah, yeah. she's got flowers. Yeah, they look like something. They look like the the d- decayed, desiccated husks of flowers that were long ago thrown out. Like my love is as dead as these flowers. <laughs> Give them the page. <laughs> and then in the morning, uh, well, she she goes to sleep for one of maybe about a hundred times. If you're yeah. gonna turn, I always turn it into a drinking game. If you're gonna do a drinking game with American Poltergeist two, um, don't make page sleeping as everybody takes a shot because the whole party will be shut down with with projectile oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The hour. <laughs> yes. there are lots of scenes of waking up and going to sleep and then waking up again and sleeping and then of a uh, ghostly figure standing over in shadows um, but we see uh, pages asleep again she wakes up or dreams that she sees cheesy dumb shadows all over her room um then Page me up with is this Tommy's wife or girlfriend? It, it's his wife. Okay. His wife. Paige, I think. No, that's the, the lead character, yeah. isn't it? It's Jenna, Lisa, uh uh Jinglehammer Schmidt. I don't <laughs> I know. I can't remember. Tommy's her. wife. Tommy's wife from it. So yeah. they they're talking in the uh the diner or something, and Tommy's wife brings up some supposed past history about a stalker. They throw out a random name and then just keep going by. So I guess she's had some problem with stalkers. That's why she gets creeped out with Cooper. And But it, it just doesn't make a difference throughout the entire film. It plays no part whatsoever. Yeah, it's one of the many places where an editor could have helped this movie. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. The pacing was so slow. And it seems like that where we don't need. Yeah, it was. I mean, and I'm sure you guys felt the same way. By the second act of the movie, I felt like we were being actively punished. Like, I, I it, it reminded me of a story my brother told me where he was going to see this band, and the opening band just stood up on stage and just let feedback just rain just for minutes on end. Just. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't so no that's that's their whole first album is is feedback uh, <laughs> fucking sloth music but um and, and after about five minutes of this the uh the lead singer goes i can't believe you guys aren't booing yet we've just been playing horseshit feedback for about five minutes and then it was like Boo! <laughs> and that was american poltergeist too it was like it was it, it was daring you to watch it <laughs> to completion Oh yeah, and I, I told you I had to watch this in increments. So uh, a, tw- a fifteen increment here, a twenty increment there, and still by the time I was an hour through, I, I was like, I have forty three more minutes of this fucking movie to get through. Yeah, yeah, that's what it felt like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, yeah, like forty three minutes can feel like a long time when you're at the dentist or <laughs> your, or you're getting a, putting your hand in you're, a you're, boiling pot of water. <laughs> Getting a vasectomy that you didn't consent to, <laughs> watching American Poltergeist three. Oh, three. <laughs> Rule of three for comedy. <laughs> Rule of three for comedy. Uh, <laughs> I can actually hear the desperation in Jason's voice on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Paige is walking with her friend. I guess this is Jenna. They're talking about something or other. It doesn't matter. But uh, Paige sees something here by her car. She goes, offers. She offers Jenna a a ride to her own car, which is literally five spaces yeah, down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, why do you do this? This is really weird. <laughs> <laughs> and and this is now that i'm it, yeah because i'm actually uh got this uh playing in real time while we review this wonderful feature we are th- there's definitely going to be some skipping ahead later on folks don't don't, yeah. don't you worry but um it's it, it's even more florida-esque it's just this flat kind of like you know expanse to nowhere yeah, <laughs> which oh, yeah. is kind of <laughs> so we uh, okay. uh, so the friend jenna i 
she sees a figure in the back of Paige's car. So that's the only thing that that scene was supposed to do, I guess. Um, but we fast forward, nothing really happens. Paige gets out of the shower. There's something written on the steamed up mirror. Um, I did that we can't, can't read. read. Yeah. yeah, it's totally unreadable. But she wanders around the house with a baseball bat with scary music in the back. And I think Cooper shows up at the door and she just berates the shit out of him. Yeah. And Cooper's got like yeah, flowers like... on his hand and like candy. Like he's going <laughs> <laughs> to. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, which I, you know, I kind of valid. I yeah, think I you know, scared, and someone just shows up at your front porch and wants to woo you. I mean, yeah, and I'm not trying to potentially victim blame. Thankfully, nothing happens. But well, uh, thankfully, God, God forbid, <laughs> something happened yeah. in this <laughs> fucking turd. But um, you know, it's like not to victim blame, but it's like I feel vulnerable. I just got out of the shower and I'm naked. Let me go to the door thusly and and you know greet this horned up dude that that we've already established has boundary issues. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, obviously, he's trying to let her know, you know the difference between stalking and wooing and that he's definitely not stalking her. No, no I'm definitely not, definitely stalking, not stalking you. Her. You know, <laughs> these could be anybody's underwear that I found. <laughs> <laughs> so we see uh, Cooper and Tommy or we, we kind of flash forward that Cooper and Tommy are in their server room again and shoots back and forth. Tommy and his girlfriend checking on Paige. I guess the parents went out of town and they wanted uh, Tommy to check on Paige, like she's an eight year old, but she's yeah. got to be 17. I mean, she's not, she, she can stay in a house by herself. She doesn't need to be checked upon. I mean, I assume so. Especially yeah. if the parents are just out of town for a day. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And if, if I was Tommy, I'd be like, Dad, because his parents are constantly berating him while he's trying to quote unquote work. He's like, Dad, I'm 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 analyzing the footage of the front door here. You know, <laughs> this is what you pay me for, Dad. I have to analyze the footage. Make sure no students come to the door for Paige. Yeah. God know, forbid someone God. brings flowers. I know, yeah. We would we would hate for this young lady had to have her sexual awakening on camera. It'd be awkward for everyone. Um, so we uh geez, I, I put even we jumped to like we're 37 min minutes in. <laughs> God. I had to annotate that. Um, Paige's friend uh, Jenna, I guess, is attacked in bed by a ghostly entity. This is where they're sleeping in the same bed scene jenna and and it's not Paige. hot if you if you're imagining something hot it is not no, no. this is the, the mini bed the half half twin they're cramped in there <laughs> and something jumps on jenna and just starts attacking her and then uh yeah. but then, you know all, leading up to this point we're we're jumping back to these different scenes the server room uh to the house to a different to the diner but there's no like establishing shots or anything so we're jumping back and forth so much that it got to a point where even though i wasn't paying that much attention to this movie it, it really <laughs> lost me on where everyone was anyways yeah so even though they're obviously in the same house yeah yeah they're just different rooms they kind of i guess goss gussied up well there was a but there was a lot of jumping <laughs> around people, characters. Right? you had like all these people just kind of like showing up for like a minute and then they were gone it's showing up for like another minute and then they're gone so yeah. trying yeah, to yeah. capture where somebody was at any given time it was like kind of like another, you know, one of those classic jigsaw puzzles where you're trying to figure out what piece goes where kind of thing. <laughs> that's what it was. I, 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 that's, that's the feeling I got. It was just a puzzle we had to put together eventually. And again, that's why I was thinking maybe this is a high art film. I'm not getting it. I may have to go on the internet and delve into some deep dives of what American Poltergeist meant. Uh, what does it mean to the body politic? Uh, who are these characters <laughs> compared to the political environment that we have today? Those, those deep questions. Those well, deep questions. Yeah. Yes, de definitely. Have you ever, you remember the choose your own adventure books from our childhood? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you ever just read one consecutively without going on the actual jumping around yeah. part? That's what it was like. And, <laughs> I think the editor for this movie said, by editor, you mean I assemble all of the footage in the in the order that you shot it in, and then that's your movie, right? Like, I guess so. You know, you are working for pot. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it could, be, it could be that, or it could be high art. Come on, Clay. It could be. It's it's it it's it's high art that I wasn't high enough to appreciate <laughs> as art. Like, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's what it was. So... Um, Go ahead. Uh, so it's like, a, yeah. So Paige decides to go to. <laughs> so I, I guess this girl Jenna is put in a catatonic state because of this attack. Yeah, that's and, basically. And, yeah. 
Yeah, and then Paige's friend Ava, who's supposedly a bad friend for inviting Ava to the woods for a party. Um, she keeps saying that, and she, then running off. Yeah, to and she gets some of that D. Yeah, yeah, and that's that makes her a bad friend apparently, and that's what she keeps telling a page throughout the entire the rest of the movie. Now, I'm sorry for being such a bad friend. Um, I, it's like, what did you do? Like, I mean, it's what did you think we were going to go do in this in this drunken party in the woods, girl? What have you never seen another movie? <laughs> I think you see one of the best uh, acting performances of coming up which is, you know, Paige decides to go to Ava's house and Ava reads some shit about ghosts and, you know, what poltergeists are and hauntings. And we see like this woman peeping Tom, they're kind of this woman like watching their conversation. And then she just jumps in and it's Ava's mom talking about is, you know, do you need me to read for a oh, heart? Oh, or the hippie mom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, Ava's mom is is a delight. She really is. She's she's uh, she's this goofy metaphysical type of lady that um, it doesn't help the expo doesn't move the exposition along one iota. But she gives us a, a break where it's like she seems nice. I'd love to hang out with her. I bet she's she's and she, again, Florida. She reminds me of a lot of these these um, kind of like uh, adorable metaphysical type people that you meet in Florida. <laughs> So like Morgan said, this is just a, a throwaway character because uh, this is only to advance the plot, I, what plot there is, just a little bit, because she gives them a recommendation to visit a paranormal doctor. Oh, and then we are treated to Dr. Oh, Hidalgo, the, another benchmark of a character. Imagine if Harry Potter uh, grew up and uh, got into parapsychology and was a total dick about it and didn't believe anything. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, uh, how do you go? How do you become a paranormal you know, doctor? It's, it's a paranormal, whatever he calls himself. And he's just so skeptical of everything these girls are saying. And I was like, wait a minute, isn't this your fucking field of work? <laughs> uh, again, it's kind of like the guy. It's kind of like the 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 brother who's doing the home security watch in the home. He really doesn't even have a career. This guy's kind of the same lot. He really doesn't have a career. No, no. If if it's chasing down ghosts, you're you're guaranteed a career that is going to be kind of you know like you never have to prove anything. It's it's like a proctologist that's real squeamish about <laughs> buttholes or something. <laughs> <laughs> With the uh, so oh, suffering, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, like uh, Doctor Hidalgo, like we said, is the benchmark character in this thing. One of them. It's just like you're at this point in the movie, you're clawing like for anything. Like the boredom is so oppressive yeah. that it's just like okay, a, a, a character that's actually interesting enough that I can kind of hate him a little bit. And um, we actually have some audio. It, it, it took me a lot of work to find this, but we've got Ooh. some audio of the actual audition of this uh, of this actor trying to get this part. Do you guys want to hear yeah, it? Yeah, uh, that's uh, Jason Beck, I think his name is. Yeah, I had to go look up his name because he he's the best part of this movie honestly he really is and i have a sneaking suspicion he's not really british but uh i guess we're getting ready to find out so let's cue that up um is this the is this the place i need to go for american poltergeist 2 for casting why yes it is okay good good i i took a wrong turn down some weird street and now it's just a weird location located in this back alley but you know uh, i'm gonna I'm dealing with it. It looks like you've got a lot of people lined up here, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, my name is Jason Beck, and I am an actor here in Los Angeles, and here's my resume. So I hear uh, Amer this is called American Poltergeist 2 or something, so whatever you need me to do, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. We're casting the part for the Paramount Normal Doctor in American Poltergeist 2, so can you do an accent, especially a really bad one? I'm irrationally fixated on goofy accents. Well. Wow. Um, an accent. I'm really excited for the doctor part. So, uh, an accent. Um, oh, hello, governor. I do say this entity is quite the puzzling enigma. Pip pop, fish and chips. Each have a point. What do you say, old chap? Fresh in your pint, governor. Ah, oh, that was horrible. That was terrible. Awesome. You're hired. Some guy. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't know what we just heard there, but um, it's uh, it sounded like a, a very authentic uh, audition tape. I, 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 I think, think that was him. 
I think it was too. Yeah, it, I, I can't believe we found it totally this. Totally wasn't us. Yeah, that wasn't us just taking on goofy no, accents. No, no, we don't do that. Yeah. We take this no. job very seriously. It, I do. Yeah, I don't know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so the Scooby Gang, the Scooby Gang picks up and uh, starts doing their best sleuthing ever, and they go to the mm-hmm. library and they find the 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 weird librarian and the library that, that smells like a morgue. She said. Oh yeah, so that was a weird reference. Uh, what am I? It's like they turn me on to hang out in them. Don't judge me. <laughs> it's like I'll judge you plenty, lady. <laughs> and so they have to do it the old school way, I guess, looking through newspapers because microfish is for those big city folks. Um, yeah. So Co- Florida hasn't caught up yet, I yeah. guess. <laughs> and so Cooper and Tommy and Tom's girlfriend—they're all in the server room and they're looking at. Some footage, again, this is security footage that we can't see. They say it's a shadowy figure, and uh, Tommy's girlfriend says she's going to go be sick. So I don't, uh, I guess shadowy figures are not her forte. <laughs> maybe she shouldn't go out into the sun a lot because there's, she sees these weird dark things following her around everywhere. Stop staring so. at the giant ball of burning gas and you won't see those things. <laughs> <laughs> Sunspots, but when they say sunspots, that means my uh, sun blindness, right? Yeah, exactly. From looking at it, it's like, yes, that's that's what it means, young lady. And then you pat the top of her head. <laughs> if you're drinking shots by now, uh, Paige is back in bed. Um, yeah, she sleeps about as much as a sloth, a cat, or you know, like a a, a day yeah. drinker. <laughs> she thinks that uh, that according to some of the lore she's read, that if she says asked for the uh, entity to leave or tells it to leave that it's supposed to leave it's kind of like asking a cop if they're a cop <laughs> and you're supposed to tell me if you're a cop <laughs> so that's kind of how she thinks poltergeist work um so <laughs> there's some dude standing in a dark corner she says and this is I, I wrote it down i want you to leave this house i want you to leave this room and i was like which one should he do first <laughs> <laughs> i can walk through lot walls lady it's <laughs> relative um but this, <laughs> this apparition loves Paige apparently because he says i love you um he jumps at her and we're treated some more poor audio i can't really understand stuff the stuff that goes on um yeah i i i had to turn on the 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 captions and it was still <laughs> that was almost worse because then it forced me to look at the screen <laughs> a lot yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the, there's uh, uh, nothing really comes of that. They it's another scene right after that shows the group huddled around Tommy's computer sleuthing again, and all they're doing is just really looking up Google and just. And <laughs> 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 Tommy's like, "How do you spell poltergeist?" <laughs> oh, it auto completes it. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I don't have to spell it. And I, okay, again, like the actor that plays Tommy, again, what a terrible lisp. And they, it's almost like they, they intentionally gave him a lot of S words in the, in the script. It's just cruel. Oh, it's yeah, just yeah. mean and, and <laughs> hateful. Sally fell, fee fell by a fee <laughs> You're doing great, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah this, why is everybody laughing you guys are fucking dicks okay i, I told you i didn't want to be in this movie I, that's how it's, everybody's demeanor is like they're doing it as a favor for their for their po or something <laughs> so we have uh this is how you discover the name of uh what is it mrs pentacrest or whatever they go ah yeah, uh, yeah the, another the neighbor yeah yeah they, so they go yes. through they find somehow uh, she's some dead dude's daughter by this point there's a lot of names there's a lot of exposition this is at the 57 minute mark by the way this is why <laughs> this is why i started having my breakdowns and i think i was writing to you guys <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> like was this a good idea do we really need to do I mean, this? Yeah, I think at this point, jason was thinking seriously he was going to need therapy after this one <laughs> it was because i was just sitting here and then the wife would come in here and comfort me and she'd bring me hot chocolate and you know rub my shoulders how are you how much longer do you have to go okay i'm here for you if you need anything and you, you kind of had those wide eyes and just gave like a little twitch and that was that yeah. was it i i woke up after yeah. this movie was over with a, a pillow over my head yeah, yeah. Guys, we, we all need to 
<laughs> we all need to remember that it doesn't make us less men to to reach out right. for help, especially from <laughs> our <laughs> significant others. They're very, I'm sure all of us could say, but very, uh, you know, like supportive women in our oh, lives. Yeah, <laughs> God is through. <laughs> so at this point, uh, there's names, a lot of names, a lot of exposition. She's talking, Paige is talking, I should say, to uh, Mrs. Pentecrass. I think that's the name, that's the correct name. Mrs. Mrs. Pentagrass, which I, I I'm just now noticing this Miss Pentagram. Oh, Ooh, I'm a Pentagrass. Oh, nah. See, this this movie does have depth. Miss Pentagraph in a uh, in a treasure trove of like in, in a pirate's booty of character. She's she's still a gem. She's still the one that's like, ooh, I want that sparkly one. Just uh, she's kind of like a foghorn leghorn kind of sounding lady. Wait, oddly enough, guys, we have uh, the audition tape for this uh, young lady as well. If you'd uh, like this to is hear incredible. It, so but Clay, you're not using up our entire cinematic suffering budget on your on discovering this stuff are you i hope you're just finding this through good old sleuthing methods like these kids are using like google via google uh, we can talk about that off air but you both of you guys owe me a couple bucks <laughs> but uh, anyway let's let's uh let, let's spin this up hey sound guy hello thanks for coming in um we're casting for the character of mrs pendergrass uh i have this thing for accents like i really need them i just I got to have it. So can you do something? Oh, I don't know. Maybe like something like 1865 Georgia or something. Oh, I can try. Um, <clears throat> well, child, I do declare cornbread and black eyed peas. I, I say, I say, I do have the vapors, uh, collard greens and a whole mess of fried okra. Uh, lemonade on the porch down by the, the holler. Uh, oh, okay. okay, okay. Segregation. Wow. Wow. That that was shockingly offensive. But you got the part. You're hired. That's thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. There we okay. Go. So we got that. Was wow. that was great. That was. That was uh, <laughs> I mean, she sounds a little bit different during the 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 audio of that. But I'm just attributing just just, it's just it's kind of old footage. Yeah. So I can I can yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know maybe they told her just pull it back a little. <laughs> it was bit. very illuminating. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It's yes, like definitely. Some tunes right now. Um, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. so there's the there's there's like okay i don't know if i'm jumping in here i guess it doesn't matter but they, they're i guess she's telling a story and now we finally get to see some flashbacks right and there's a, there's yes. a boy being whipped i guess on a tree with his hands <laughs> and i just started laughing because there's this sound effect that they use and it's not from the movie itself it's not from any of the actors this is an actual audio effect that uh, video gamers user use for their comedic videos and it's this audio of this boy and you hear him <laughs> and it, i recognized it immediately and couldn't stop laughing even though this kid's covered in blood and hung up hanged up by his hands i will i will put that in i will put that in as an example uh in post-production here but you guys will laugh it'll be a, it'll be an amazing mashup <laughs> it's like the the Bill, what Wilhelm scream is it the it's, same is it that prolific yeah, of it's a... the same as the Wilhelm scream it's it's similar to that where it's <laughs> used constantly in different uh video gaming uh vids on YouTube and Twitch so yeah I, I'm just curious Morgan what's your favorite character so oh, far movie? <laughs> yes oh man oh, no of all time <laughs> Cinema history. Yes, this uh, movie. Actually, actually, the the guy that piqued my interest the most was the was the 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 paranormal uh, specialist that hated being a paranormal specialist. I was like, it's almost <laughs> like <Dr. laughs> he's doing his own freaking job. <laughs> there's there's not a wrong answer, but that's the right <laughs> one. <so>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I will goodness. say it's the dad. So, the dad's my favorite character this entire movie. The creepy dad. Paige's dad. Yeah, creepy. creepy yeah, dad. yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I feel some kind of um, sympathy to people who are creepy. So that's just so. I just he the, Paige's dad reminds me of the of a, the type of guy that the last time he had sex was to make <laughs> Paige. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was a little wound tight. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he, uh, or, you know, like he, he seems to find his solace in that sweet, sweet grub, <laughs> Look at it, like, crying over a, a, over a cold bucket of fried chicken. <laughs> okay, so well, the, the, we see these little flashbacks that don't help explain the story at all, and not one, mainly because the, the audio is so 
messed up that you can't really understand what's going on. Again, I should have put on s- subtitles or closed caption, but I didn't at this point. Um, so we no. see the Scooby gang is staring at the monitor in Tommy's server room yet again. They talk about the footage. They act very shocked about what they see. But again, we're we're not treated to what they see. So. Yeah, and Tommy's like, this isn't an artifact. Yeah, All right. yeah I lined oh, up the artifact well, with he, the other thing. He probably Googled video, uh, uh, you know, uh, surveillance editing or whatever, you know, analysis, and he saw that <laughs> word come back in the Google search, and he's like, I got to figure out how to work this word in, artifact. <laughs> I mean, that is a stellar word, guys, don't oh, yeah. you think? I really like the word, Tommy. <laughs> I'm Cooper, I just, by the way. Just as a... Just as a side note, because I thought this was funny, uh, in my notes, I, in all caps, I have three girls, one list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, anyway, I don't need to, we don't need to sit on that too long. So, but, so Morgan's favorite uh, character shows up, uh, the Dr. Hidalgo, and no, offers Hidalgo. up no help whatsoever to everyone. He. <laughs> Yeah, again, he's skeptical, doesn't say anything that would matter. Um, but we kind of jump to where Ava is going to go visit Jenna. Jenna, if you don't remember, is the catatonic friend. And uh, Ava <laughs> visits Jenna's house. And at the one hour and 12 minute mark, the, the mother of Jenna starts t- rambling about how she can't trust doctors nowadays because of Obamacare. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you catch that? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> so... I just, uh, that damn Obamacare. You can't trust doctors nowadays because that damn Obamacare. And then yep. it just kind of leads off to – it doesn't even lead anywhere. It's like, why was this even in here? Yeah. Again, this is why I keep thinking this is these movies were made by some kind of conservative thing. But maybe, again, it was just kind of poking fun at it. But I don't know. It's that. I was trying to look more information on the director. I couldn't find it. <laughs> With my extensive Google search- searches didn't bring up anything. <laughs> You need to dig yeah. deep. <laughs> Clearly, you don't have the sleuthing skills that Tommy does. <laughs> no, or Paige. They're doing very well. <laughs> or me finding these audition yeah. tapes. So I guess yeah. the, the Scooby gang, again, is all gathered in the house. <laughs> and except for Cooper, who calls Paige on her phone, leaves a message. But he's like, hey, just want to tell you I'm leaving, blah, blah, blah. And, oh, my God, I'm going to die. <laughs> and that's his voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all staring at Goodbye, the phone. Cooper. They're all staring at the phone, going, "Who's going? Who's it going to be next?" Ava says, "Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be next?" And I was like, "Everyone, hopefully." Yeah, yeah. Please. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if at this point the ghost from the beginning of the movie just jumped out of the shadows with sickle in hand and just took everybody out at the neck with one <laughs> just arc of his blade and then we just sit there for the rest of the movie looking at their <laughs> yes, headless corpses and, and, and roll, and roll credits and, and everybody's happy Put Everybody, a or the the curb your enthusiasm theme song <laughs> with just ketchup sounds as our carrier spray arcs through the air i dude i i we we would be the most excellent script doctor. We'd probably be rich by now if we yeah. script doctors uh, in Hollywood. I think we've, uh, with the exception of Morgan, because but uh, I think <laughs> that the rest of us have missed our calling in life. <laughs> you seem to have done good in your career. <laughs> I can't speak for everybody, but you know. So, <laughs> so these uh, these little things that, like uh, they they hear Cooper die. Apparently, it's a car wreck. I thought he got attacked or something, but they said it was a car wreck. Um, Paige and Ava are sh- in a twin bed. They're going back to sleep again, and yep, we see the the serial killer poltergeist comes out and starts assaulting everyone. This time, the dad walks in with a shotgun. He gets thrown out. Um, Mom comes in there screaming, "Let go of my daughter!" <laughs> And uh, the ghost pushes her down uh, lightly. <laughs> lightly. <laughs> like, you get away from me. And uh, she. Yeah. Like, you take acting lessons. You. <laughs> and we see everyone's kind of, you know, Paige is being attacked by this, the, the evil entity. And we see a hand slowly reaching up to turn on the light because that's, that's a poltergeist's worst enemy. Yeah. Is light. light. Yes. Yes. Um, so that's the, they turn on the lights and the entity disappears and stupid electricity um but <laughs> I, 
they didn't have this back in my time when I done did was alive. So Ava, Hidalgo, Tommy, and Paige decide to drive out to the countryside to visit the old spooky tree because that's where they will find how to put this entity to rest, I guess? Uh, yeah. And the, re the reason that you sound confused about it is the reason that we're all confused is because the characters seem to know what they need to do. They didn't let us, no. the audience, yeah. in on it one little bit. I have no clue why we're here or what we're doing. <laughs> um, yeah, and so they drive out to the, the countryside and they sit around talking, I guess, around a, a fire. Um and then they try to find, uh, they're looking for the spooky tree. They can't seem to find it. And Tommy says, what if it's a ghost tree? And I was like, oh, fuck, <laughs> a ghost tree. Yeah, it could be. Sorry, hold on a second here. I'm having trouble. Okay, okay, maybe. okay. sorry. You couldn't find the ghost tree either is what you're saying. <laughs> either of us. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I don't remember a ghost tree. To, to quote Paige, after they are looking around, I can't find it. Okay, I'm gonna find that line because it's it's something straight out of the room. Um, oh, I was gonna say, and then and then Tommy was so shows up. It's like there's no ghost. Okay, <laughs> what a great story, Paige. <laughs> you seem to be the expert on poltergeist it would have been so much better if tommy was so just showed oh, the fuck up, that that would be up another notch definitely <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely so where the hell are we at in this unspeakable so turd of a movie huddled around a, a campfire and they continue to wander around the the woods at night um I was just like, please, something happened. Please, something attacked them by now. But uh, some somehow Paige gets separated and she finds herself I, I, I just separated from everyone. One, for, I don't know how this happens, but they yell. They're yelling for her. And I was like, did she step into another Paige. dimension? Uh, because they're <laughs> yelling and she shouldn't be that far away. Um, no, no. So the best thing to do is like at night when you're separated from your group is to go running blindly in the dark, which is exactly what Paige yeah. Did, yeah. does. <laughs> yep. Arms yeah, are flailing. Flail and she falls, she finds a skeleton and then screams. And then now everyone hears. Then, her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She sees a skeleton and then screams, right? Yeah. right? So she couldn't hear them yeah, yelling for yeah. her, but they could hear her screams. Right. After she went running uh, wildly through the woods to who knows where. Yeah. Over 10 feet you're away, 15 you're feet blowing away. my mind with this logic <laughs> thing, Morgan. It's it's just too much logic here. <laughs> I know, right. <laughs> <laughs> so they, I think they go and find her, um, but Hidalgo's little uh, modified Geiger counter picks up some movement. Uh, it suddenly turns into aliens. And yeah. I, I'm expecting a xenomorph to hopefully come out and just rip everyone apart. Uh, that would have been cool. Yeah, that would have been awesome. So, yeah. And then we were treated. I, I think he... He he bought the prop on eBay. It was something that they just threw away in Ghostbusters. Like this looks stupid. <laughs> no one will believe it. I can afford that. So yeah. So uh, it is one of the <laughs> comically uh, bad kind of payoffs is that we get to see the good Doctor Hidalgo dispatched. He's uh, he's kind of picked up and then just torn his into limbs, pieces. It's just limb his from limbs from limb. His limbs look like they just fell off really quickly. <laughs> Like it's a, a mannequin that you pull in this, the, the trees and they're like, oops, an arm fell off. Oh, that looked good on what, film. What um, was a very strong Velcro. Yeah. <laughs> no. It happened so quick that I didn't realize what had happened. I had to go back and rewind. And it was so poorly lit that I was like, okay, well, I guess something happened to him. Yeah. It goes like, I, I imagine the um, the editor, they got the same guy to edit it and do the post-production, is he's like, I told you I'm not good at After Effects. And they're like, fine, just just and go it, ahead and run with it. That's the most it. excitement yeah. in the movie up to this point. Yeah, yeah. That's the I mean, finally action. something happens, yeah. Finally something happens. Uh, Hidalgo, <laughs> who we all loved. And I mean, a dear, and, yeah, gonna very, very, yes. very endearing character. Very, very endearing character. And the group... The rest of the group just starts running away, and we've got about 12 minutes to go before the movie ends. Oh, this God. Is where I was like, oh, yeah. we got to be getting close to the end here. So, and, and and I think Tommy at that point said, I have in my notes, let's just stay the night. And, uh, yeah. you know, I felt, I felt bad about making fun of his accent again. I, didn't you make know, fun of his accent. I just wanted to make fun of uh, the old, uh, the old hero trope that usually characters should, you know, act instead of react to things uh tommy was definitely in the react <laughs> category he wanted to stay in the car sleep and just see what happens right. and that's 
<laughs> You've already seen somebody born aloft by ghostly entities that ripped them apart, but let's see how right. this progresses. You know, it's like everybody else, just take it easy. Let's just you know kind of hang out here and just see what happens, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll twist up some Maui Wowie. We'll get relaxed. It'll all I mean, be I good. This to the Avengers Infinity War. I mean, I mean that's yeah. what the Avengers did. They just sat around and waited for Thanos yep. to kill everyone. Yep. Uh, um, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. And, and really, the two movies are about on par when it comes to <laughs> goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so they they, they 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 do go to the car. Tommy or it really, the car doesn't start obviously because why would a car start? In no, days? not in these God, movies. Why it won't would it? Yeah. So Tommy says, oh, it's either the battery is completely dead or the alternator's out. I was like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter, dude. <laughs> yeah, well, here's a problem. There's squirrels in the goddamn engine. <laughs> oh, well, let's just scoot these up. <laughs> yeah, okay, so okay, well, now we can crank it up. Let's go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> So yeah, you're right. Tommy just says, shoot through the fuel injection system. God damn it! So yeah, you're right. Tommy just tells everyone to calm down, and they're gonna wait around for whatever <laughs> happens. And I was like, "There's our feckless heroes, everyone. Just wait. Yeah. Don't act. Don't do yeah. anything." <laughs> Always good to have everyone asleep hey, at the climax of your mood too. Wait, Very when exciting. You're, when you're the when you're the big hero, why exert any extra energy? Let the let the bad guy come to you. Yeah. Yeah, this should be the That's thing right. in every movie. Just let the bad guy come to you. Don't actively search them out. Don't actively try to defeat them. If they find you and kill you, eh, well. Hey, what if he like did, overexerted right? himself and like threw his back out or something, you know? Then he can't fight the bad guy kind of thing. I know. That would be <laughs> tragic, yeah, to burn calories. It's just going in the opposite direction of the thing that's trying to kill you. But if it can just... If it can just kind of <laughs> break you down into your component parts because it finds you annoying, then where can you go? I, I don't know. We have, I mean, this is the, this climax is <clears throat> really amazing because all the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life in movies, even the the room, which I always like to point back to, made more sense when it came to filmmaking than what happens next. Uh, everyone's asleep in the car. Because, again, like I said, at the climax of your movie, having everyone asleep is very exciting for everyone to watch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the serial killer dude, poltergeist, I guess, beckons Paige. She wakes up, and she sees the poltergeist standing outside the car, and he beckons for her to follow him. And she's like, hey, why not? What a good idea. Yep. Um, I won't tell anyone. <laughs> I'll just sneak out of the car and follow this poltergeist who's been attacking me this whole fucking time. Right. Into the dark woods. <laughs> Total um, passive aggressive. She can't make up her mind. First, she wants him to go away, but now she wants to go and see what he's doing and follow him. <laughs> she maybe she can't tell if, can't tell the difference between if this ghost is wooing her or stalking or talking her. her. <laughs> 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 I mean, do you like me? Do you like me like me, or do you just kind of like me? I mean, oh, that's true. That's true. Uh, that's true. Uh, yeah. He just wanted into her, into her, into her blue. <laughs> so Tommy and Ava white, wake up to find Paige is missing, and they go to find her. Uh, more, there's some intense walking scenes of Paige. Um, yeah, <laughs> the serial killer. The, I call her the serial killer. The poltergeist points at a rope on a tree and then down to the ground, and we see some more bones at the bottom of the ground. And she's she's like, "Why would I help you? You're an evil creature, a bad evil creature." <laughs> I think my page <laughs> impression is right on, by the way. Uh, I, 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 I thought that she was uh, in the yeah. room with us for a so second. Some, whatever this poltergeist is trying to tell her, she thinks it's an evil creature. She doesn't want to help it or whatever. Uh, Tommy <laughs> and Ava show up and with a, with a rope and just tie the poltergeist around the tree. I guess they blessed it somehow. I don't There's know. Something I missed because they I didn't know you could tie rope. I don't know. <laughs> 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 what it is is they meant to film the scene where uh the harry potter dr hidalgo guy gave them some kind of MacGuffin that would allow them, like you need to use this because it's been blessed by a shaman on the hill <laughs> and then they gave it yeah and it's yeah there, there's a lot of stuff I, I don't know maybe i just missed stuff in the dialogue but yeah they they capture this this poltergeist and tie it to the tree the poltergeist is like no or saying something um so uh, we don't know that until we see the final yeah. climactic uh, M. Night Shyamalan ending that's coming up. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah poof. Explosion of sparks, and then our, our ghost has been dispatched. Right. And that's how you get rid of Poltergeist, guys. Um, just 
Yeah, you tie you tie them up with a MacGuffin that you have not established earlier on in the movie. You had a lot of opportunities, and does they tr- they truss him up real good, and then he goes poof, and then he's gone. Yeah, good guys win. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what he saved up all his energy for. <laughs> Yeah. So Paige, Paige comes yeah. home from being out all night in a dangerous situation with uh, a dead doctor and uh, I, I can't I say doctor, but it just comes home and mom is welcoming for once after her being out all night. And uh, now everyone is just happily sitting at the table talking and laughing like nothing happened. And I thought this was maybe a, maybe a couple weeks later. No, this is the same night. Yeah, she comes yeah. home. They all sit <laughs> around got- the table and they start talking and laughing. <laughs> I remember when the doctor was pulled up in the tree and his limbs were pulled from his body? That was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the cops are gonna have so many probing when questions. Cooper died on my voicemail. I still have it. Let's listen to it now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should send somebody out to confirm. Fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. No, let's call the cops. No. Nope. So we're we're treated to another scene of Paige going to bed again. Um. And then Paige looks through the old diary, I guess that Miss Pentagraph, Mrs. Pentagraph or whatever gave to her. And she sees that the yes. poltergeists were actually twins. Yes, yeah. twin poltergeists. Twist. A twist. And yeah. uh, we, it, like it mattered because none of the, there was nothing in the film that differentiated between either twin poltergeists. So at the end there, we, we start seeing flashbacks of what's supposed to be kind of like, you know, the sixth sense where, we start seeing all the stuff that we missed throughout the film that gave clu- clues and hints <laughs> to this magnificent ending, and it fails so bad. And well, and let's—I mean, unless I'm, I'm hallucinating, Miss Pentagrass says that there was Roy and Ray and Ray and Roy, and that they, she they established this whole twin thing early on. It's just <laughs> it's just woven into the fabric of this boring ass movie so you don't care it, it was not a twist it was given to us we just like you weren't paying attention, <laughs> you were you? Paid attention to the exposition that we went over for about 15 minutes straight yeah this is why you got to see in man <laughs> <laughs> oh god this is this is why we have make america great again right now yes this is i, I we're getting there we're so Dude, close i one, feel the one american that, poltergeist at yeah. a time <laughs> build a wall around these fucking movies, man. <laughs> okay, so, okay. Deport this movie. Deport it. So, uh, that's pretty much the end. Uh, I guess she sees like what the the face of one of the the evil poltergeist in her phone or something. Yeah. And that's how it ends. And, and she says, "We stopped the wrong twin." Yeah. Dun dun dun. Which was an interesting line yeah. because it's like, okay, so there was one, so so one poltergeist was a good poltergeist, and the other poltergeist was a bad poltergeist, and they killed the good one, or you know, yeah, like there's one that doesn't kill, there's one poltergeist. <laughs> did you see the same movie we did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's if if there's a, if there's a fascinating thing about this movie, aside from the fact that it exists and that you can watch it on Netflix, I don't know why they do they. I what's the that's vetting like process it. I like? like? To see that I, vetting process that Netflix has. I, I wonder if I want to compare it to Steam. Uh, the you know the gaming platform on PC where anyone can yep. o- upload any stupid game that they've created out of pencils and crayons and <laughs> charge twenty dollars for it you know yeah never you know follow your dreams don't worry about if you're good at your craft that's totally yeah, irrelevant that's what I'm getting out of this and frankly it's very inspiring uh, because. I mean, it is to me like, you know, I, I, I didn't bother to get dressed for this podcast, for instance, but you guys know what you guys would know. Well, I, I wasn't going to reveal you. this, but as we were sitting here talking about this, I'm actually Googling what it takes to become a paranormal investigator. Ooh. Can you get a Ooh, it sounds like you can enlighten yeah. uh, I'm I'm going to try to, let me see if I can uh, <laughs> switch careers or, you know. How much school yeah. do you need for that? I mean, obviously, you need a master's or a PhD because you have to be a doctor in paranormal. It, that's what psychology. we were told. I mean, that's what that's what we were, you know, we were informed. <laughs> um, let's see. Learn how to become a paranormal. Paranormal investigation is extremely popular as an amateur hobby among enthusiasts who have experienced strange <laughs> and seemingly unexplainable phenomenon firsthand. Unfortunately, the majority of these potential oh. investigators have no research background. Well, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've established that. 
Well, I think we found our, <laughs> our I think we found our calling to tell I you. I mean, the truth. basically, I guess if you can buy a, a leftover unused prop from Ghostbusters on eBay, then there you go. I mean, that's. Well, yeah, and 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 Morgan, I know you've you've invested a lot of time, and your 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 family has has had to to kind of support you in all this to to accomplish your dreams. You've put in a lot of sleepless nights, but it seems like you need to set fire to all that. <laughs> and, and Why wouldn't I? I mean, I'm path. inspired by Dr. Helgalgo. I mean, that that dude was spot on, man. I mean, yes. I want to become a, 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 a I want to get into a profession that I hate my profession. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Follow your dreams, man. Yeah. Follow your dreams. <laughs> okay, so uh, to become a careful and practiced paranormal investigator, there are several areas of training you can focus on to ensure you conduct yourself as an authentic researcher in the field. Doing so, you will increase your chances of successfully identifying the true source of phenomenon. If you are well trained, you may even be the one to make a breakthrough. So there you go, you know? Nice. Which which suggests to me that a breakthrough is is yet to happen in this uh, field. Yeah, I think. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like it's like that elusive fucking Bigfoot. He's not the it, he's he's so good at hide and seek. <laughs> there were um there were unfortunately no uh Rotten Tomato reviews, so it did get an average rating of four percent, but there were no critical reviews, there were no user reviews on that. So I had to go on to IMDB just to see what the highest rating it received. Uh again, no critical reviews, just user reviews. And someone gave it a seven out of ten, said it was worth watching. And then there's I this saw that. I, I, there's I, I, literally let's see, one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, seven long paragraphs. It's a long it is a long no. review. I'm not going to read it, but I encourage anyone to go onto the Poltergeist of Borley Forest, look up user reviews, and find that 7 out of 10. Worth watching wow. by Kay Luar. Wow. Is Kay Luar, that has to be a nom de plume because there is no way that that person was not affiliated with this film in some kind of way. It's like, you know, I will be damned if I'm going to let my house be used by you and your dumb friends all week to make your movie. And then some smart ass just goes on on IMDb and slags your movie up and down. <laughs> so I'm looking at the reviews of Kay Luar. Um, okay. No, nope, no, nope, they don't have anything else on there. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I should check out Amazon. What about Amazon? Amazon user reviews. Yeah, the, I mean, we're we're here. Let's well, let's be did thorough. Did you see in the actual Netflix uh, promo page for it? It says huh. this movie is dot 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 chilling, comma scary, comma suspenseful. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> okay, yeah. Hold on. There are some five star reviews here on Amazon. Okay. We'll just we'll just read one. Uh, mm -hmm. This one's from Nelly. She gave it five stars, and in her review, she wrote, "I enjoy it," and she spelled "enjoy" i n space j o y. Sweet. So nice. Enjoy. I enjoy it. So she's a verified purchase. Yeah. And nice. Wow. What? Uh, yeah. And we we need to stock her buying history. She <laughs> she, she loves like of the she loves some Goku action figures. Is she like a friend of the What's cast that? member or something like that? Or it's got to be. Anytime I read one of these like it, these inexplicably why does it exist type of movies, and I see somebody that that wrote a glowing review, I'm like, you've got to be affiliated. You you serve sandwiches to the cast during this. You you're emotionally invested in this film. You're not seeing things clearly. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, well, I guess that is it for the Poltergeist of Borley Forest or American Poltergeist 2. Yeah, number dose. And thankfully, and I think there is a third one, God help us all, but hey, we don't have to review it. Everybody likes not on when Netflix. a good number two comes to an end. <laughs> yeah, yes, satisfying. it does. Uh, yeah, you yes. can, we can wipe this one clean, hopefully. You can just... Yeah. Yes, you can just bask in the afterglow of yeah. a good number two. Clay, what do yes. we got coming up next week? Next up, we have uh, the film called Anguish. It's about mental illness, which we all now suffer from after watching hey, American a, Culture Guys 1 like and 2. That, yeah. Yeah, so will the filmmakers approach the subject with the nuance and compassion it deserves, or will it be yet another unwatchable ghost movie? You sufferers are going to have to stick around oh, and I find out. Wait. I can't huh? wait. Um, do we have to plug anything? What do we have to plug? Uh, 
Morgan, you got anything you want to plug? Um, no, other than just support your local artists, support your local musicians, uh, go out, go to a show, see a band. And, uh, you know, if, if you, uh, uh, read local comics and things like that, like Clay does and whatnot, and local bands like what Jason's in, I would say, you know, live life and go do those things. Local band. How dare you? I'm a national act. Good. Oh, we don't. You're local when you're at home, but that's a, I, I yes, concur. Absolutely. I, I agree with Morgan on all that support the arts, um, go out there and find a project that means a lot to you go out and be good and, and, uh, help people. And, uh, I am Twitch streaming. Uh, I have a schedule up. If you go to JT Corpse, just go to Twitch TV, twitch.com JT Corpse. And I will be there. I was actually thinking of maybe start starting to Twitch stream these podcasts. Um, I'm not sure how much I could interact with the audience during this time, but you know, maybe if anyone wants to see how the, the gravy is made, how the sausage is made, I get to show the screens that I have up and you can see my lovely face. Well, Oh, I'm, 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 I'm about it, about it. Let's do yeah. it. I'll put on some clothes and you can uh, see me too. Uh, that sounds like a real treat. <laughs> You're not supposed to show your sausage on the internet. <laughs> well, no, oh, just there's not much for me to show. I'm sorry. What? Go to two <laughs> <laughs> Chatterbait. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys that is it uh thank you everyone for joining us yet again for episode was this 13 of cinematic suffering i am jason i'm clay and i'm morgan and we'll talk to you guys later bye peace bye thanks for listening to this episode of cinematic suffering Clay is an extremely talented and twisted comic artist and you should visit his pride and joy hboys.com that's h b o y z Com. If you're a fan of death and black metal, check out Jason's band Greyfill on all social media platforms, as well as his doom metal project Stygian Crown. Music provided by Face X Hugger. Check out Face X Hugger on Bandcamp and Twitter for more synthwave horror themed music. Questions, comments, and hate mail should be directed to our Twitter account at Cinematic Supper.